before we talk a little bit more about buyers, obviously when you send, it's what's it called, a SIM or a deck? Yep. That's just kind of when you're sending that. That's out, like the investment banking, true, cool term. By okay, the way. what's what's <laughs> what's the 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 summary of the business? We'll go. call it. There you go. That's very high level. Yep. Not a lot of details. We're not throw, but once. You know, it's like when I think about selling real estate, it's like, look, I can show you all my numbers because there's not a lot of employees associated yeah. with real estate. It's just a box with a tenant it's in it. It's kind of more tangible, right? Correct. It's maybe, I don't know if it's less emotional, but it, it's well, maybe. I just, and I just feel like if, if somebody saw my P&L on this building, the risk of what people could do with that P&L is, is a lot less in real yep. estate maybe than in business. So my question really revolves around privacy and comfort. Yep. Okay, the 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 memo or the summary has gone out. Now we're talking to call it two or three very interested, very qualified buyers that mm-hmm. are now all going to get that peek under the hood. How do you talk to sellers going, look, you're only going to get one of these, but two of these other guys might have seen absolutely quite a bit. How does that work? Well, and so look, depending on the competitive situation we're in, I may want two people in there. I may want a, a bidding war so to speak, yeah. right? Of two people interested who can't live without the asset. And so therefore I'm going to maximize value. Yeah. But this goes back to managing expectations with psychology. Just because it's the highest price doesn't mean it's the best partner. Right. I might be able to take 10% less and be in a way better position because of terms and the partner than I am taking 10% more and your life's going to be miserable. Yep. And what's super important for us is all of our business owners that we've transacted with that our clients are friends, right? And so for us to be able to do this, I got to make sure they're happy. Yeah. I can't have somebody call me up and be like, George, what the hell did you do to me? Like, these guys are terrible. And that usually doesn't happen. I mean, we do our our job is to make sure we're not bringing in people who are going to ruin for your sure. life, right? So yeah. aside from that, back to your question of, okay, people do look at this information. We're pretty cognizant about who's seen what. I mean, I'm controlling every single little bit and kind of plays to my OCD, right? Of, yeah knowing who has what, what they've seen. I'm managing the message. I'm managing the conversations and I know exactly what's going on. Again, it goes back to the quarterback deal. Nothing happens without me touching the ball, yep. right? So with that, if it's a strategic, they may not see all the same information because we're more guarded about that. They may not know who my customers are. They may just know it at customer A or B. So it kind of just depends on the situation. But yep. given the fact that other people know it, look, private equity is in the game of buying businesses, right. growing businesses and ultimately getting a return for that business. Right. You kind of got to know that going into it, yep. right? And you have to realize that there are going to be other people that are going to see your information if we go down that path. Now, three people seeing your stuff is a lot different than 300 for sure. seeing your stuff. Yep. And we're pretty, I mean, that, that's a big deal to us. Yeah, and yeah. to most of our business owners, that resonates. And then do, do the sellers, let's just say we're kind of in this three uh, buyer situation, do the sellers usually spend like a full day with each buyer kind of getting to know them? And like, how long does that marriage process take to pick the right buyer? So in a typical M&A two-step process where an investment bank is just going to basically broad auction the thing. Yeah. Right? And I'm going to use that as a benchmark to contrast with kind of some of the way we do it. Right? Okay. In that auction, they're going to call 200 people. Yeah. They're going to get probably 30 indications of interest. That is basically a document from this buyer universe that says, here's what we think we would pay for the business with limited information. And it's usually a range and it has certain things in it. You try to get the most you can, but that's typically what it is. From there, you may invite, you know, of the 30, 10 people to come meet the management team. And they do these things called management presentations where they can meet them. It's a four hour presentation. And man, that's just a whip. Like it's a lot of work. And for most business owners that we deal with, man, they don't have time for that. They're running a business, right? And so that's pretty hard. So contrast that with us. At that point, if we have three buyers that are really interested, they would have met the management team already. And so that may be a dinner and a meeting the next morning and kind of walking the facility or seeing the plan or seeing the services or whatever. It could be just a lunch where, man, you talk about your interests and what you want to do and what you want to get out of. In our world, in the space we play in, the most important thing about getting a deal done, whether you're seller or buyer, is the people. Yeah. Got to have good people. Yeah. And a buyer has to get comfortable with the marriage, so to speak, just like the seller does. Right. And I tell our business owners, man, all the time, headline price matters. You you got to make sure you have a good marriage here. That's super important. Is there is there any um, thing you've learned over time? Because everybody shows up well. It's like when you sure. interview, you've got your best stuff. Yep. How, how should a seller... Th- 
Is there certain questions or I know you represent both sides, but like, how do you damn well know you're found the yeah. right people? I mean, look, like anything, there's some risk to everything, yeah. right? You, you can't figure out just every single little thing, but I think that comes with experience and handicapping every single component of a deal. Yeah. Whether that's the person, the deal itself, the economics, the growth, how they're going to grow it, are they going to put money to work? But man, it's through conversations and it's through experience and kind of just savviness on our side yeah. to know, okay, this guy's done it before. He's yeah. got a good reputation. We've channel checked it just like he's channel checked us and no one's raised their hand and said, he screwed me. How do deals fall apart? I know we don't have to go into a really long answer. Obviously, the market can change. Yeah, COVID I'm, can hit something yeah. crazy. But like, are there more kind of common like that you've over time gone like, and maybe maybe it's not how do they fall apart, but things you can spot really early to go yeah. like, this is going to eventually kill the deal if we don't. Or get we it won't now. take the deal on. Right. right? right there right, are right. plenty of situations where we've been introduced to business owners and we get in there and maybe their accounting's just really bad yeah. and they're not even doing it right. So we can fix that and we go through it, but we're going to take the time to fix it before we go out there. Maybe they have a lawsuit that if the judgment goes against them, it could bankrupt the business. Right. Well, no buyer is going to step into that. We got to work through that. Right. right? Um, maybe they're not paying their employees overtime correctly. Right. Or maybe they're 1099 when they should be W2. Yeah. None of that ultimately kills the deal in isolation put all those together and you don't have a sophisticated of a business that ultimately a buyer may not get comfortable with. Got it. Um, but like for COVID, for example, uh, we had plenty of businesses continue to do great. We had one where a private equity group um, was going to buy the business. We were pretty close to getting it done. They were very much exposed to the restaurant and the multifamily component of the world mm -hmm. or the industries. And so based off of that with COVID, as you well know, I mean, yeah. that just stopped. And yeah. so now- they don't want to get this, uh, call it, you know, industrial deal done. They got to focus on licking wounds over here. Yeah. That literally killed the deal. Yeah. I mean, I would tell you though, for us, by the time we get to a certain LOI yeah. and we've done a ton of work, we know what the surprises could be. We pick the right partner. It's very rare for us to go from LOI to dead deal. Yep. Something would have to be pretty catastrophic or truly not misrepresented, but just omitted for yeah. whatever reason for that to happen. Because we're going to spend a ton of time on the front end because we don't like surprises. 